Okay, so I want to talk about the value creation model in, in detail. Um, each of the individual elements in the value creation model multiplied by the other is what creates our income as an organisation. And as the model builds up, we'll see how that works. So, the start of the entire process is people bringing us complex challenges and us creating predictable and sustainable solutions. Millions of examples of this. Northgate, Amanda will tell you that we've put recommendations in that saved them £650,000 in the course of one year. If they'd have done everything Amanda had said, probably about £1.3 million would have been the saving. Highways Agency, the question, how can we improve the flow of traffic on Britain's roads? The answer, as Phil will tell you, about hundred grand worth of work from us and a manual that's about that big. Uh, Royal Mail, we're currently going through this process with brown paper all over the place and process mapping and diagrams and the whole shooting match. So, Every single, every single bit of that statement is true and backed up by those case studies. Multiplied by, we are nothing without the guys who ultimately deliver our service proposition. Unified, motivated, high quality networks. Through our strategy to improve uh, standards in the body shop industry and in the recovery industry and the way in which we go about managing the relationship with our partners, the guys who deliver our service at the point of delivery to the end user, is all about that. So when it snows and we need to get recovery trucks out with rotators dragging vehicles out of hedges, when FMG support put the phone call in, that job is done. In the winter when body shops are struggling for capacity and they've got a vehicle that needs to get repaired, if it's an FMG vehicle, it gets repaired. And it's because we don't hammer them over the head with a big stick. We don't try and wreck any chance they've got of making margin or having sustainable futures themselves. It goes back to what I talked about before. Um, if we have a genuine partnership with these guys, they will deliver that. Understanding us and our brand to enable them to deliver it to the customer. Multiply by. Win-win mentality. Lots of businesses say it. Um, every bloody business says it. Uh, we can actually demonstrate that we deliver this. We have a win-win mentality. When we've got something to create as a solution, like the Highways Agency, for example, we have us to generate an income and make it work for us. We've got the highways agency to clear the roads quickly and make sure the process works for them. We've got the entire recovery industry of guys who are going to be on this contract managing this process, who also need to make a margin and have got a business to sustain. And we've also got somebody on the side of the road who needs their vehicle cleared away in a sensible time, in the right manner of service. So all those pieces added together, we've got to make everybody happy. It's what we do all the time. It's what we do all day long. It isn't just us and a customer. It's a driver and it's his fleet manager and it's his leasing company and there's a body shop and there's a third party provider and there's a etc. Everything we do is about making sure everybody in the process wins. Multiplied by something that is a key differentiator for us, particularly in our marketplace. Commercial Savviness, or to give it its slightly more boring title, uh, understanding and leveraging value chains. Uh, what that means is, to take the example of the work we're doing for the Royal Mail, there are a number of different services they require with a number of different providers with a process flow that is convoluted. If you look at it, you can understand where the pieces of value are created, where there are pieces that add no value or actually detract from the overall value of what they're trying to achieve. 
and understand where margin can be made out of it and who the margin can be made for. Uh, that's commercial savviness. Uh, we've got it in spades around this organisation, particularly embodied by Mark, John, uh, Martin, Bob, Nick, you know, and the BLT. This is what we do. This is what gives us our cleverness. This is what makes us profitable. This is what makes us sustainable. Multiplied by, and I'm drawing it in a massive red circle. Our magic accelerant is our people, is our culture, is the way that people in this organisation treat each other, treat customers, treat partners, is the whole enthusiasm, the passion, the discretionary effort. It doesn't just mean uh, John Paul in the service centre stays after his five o'clock end of shift because he's dealing with a stranded driver. It goes beyond that. So the day when he you know, got out of his seat and took a cup of coffee across the road because uh, there was a guy, one of our customers, who was broken down in his truck and he said to me, is there anything else we can do for you? And he said, well, yeah, a cup of coffee would be great. And he went and gave the guy a cup of coffee. It's those experiences, it's that trust in each other, it's that commitment and passion to the FMG way and how we deliver that to customers and partners is our magic accelerant and people would kill for it. Multiply, right? Circulating our reputation. So that's not just about press releases, it's not just about um, advertising, it's not just about the e-shots that we do on a regular basis to tell people what we're up to. It's actually about how we interact when the major account managers are sat in front of a client. It's about how the network managers interact when they're sat in front of one of our partners. It's how our managers uh, interact when they're talking to one of our people. That's about circulating a reputation in an industry where our kind of reputation doesn't really exist. And that's a reputation all the way through into our networks, a reputation around our win-win mentality, the reputation around commercial savviness, the reputation around taking complex challenges and creating predictable solutions. So guess what? That leads to people bringing complex challenges, giving us the opportunity to start the process again. Our value creation model. If any of these areas becomes smaller, i.e. we've not focused on it or we've lost some skill in that area, it affects the entire model. Think back a number of years when we started to lose some of our employee engagement and the effect that had across our entire business, that was our magic accelerant becoming smaller. Imagine if we lose commercial savviness in the business and start employing people who aren't clever, who aren't insightful, who aren't ideas people, people who can't deliver that cleverness. Imagine if our networks thought about us as they do about WS. They wouldn't be unified, they wouldn't be motivated, they'd be not high quality because they'd be actively encouraged not to be high quality. All of this leads to the bottom line of the organisation. Okay?